The men in black are aspects of American folklore that depict these characters as cryptic, enigmatic beings who drop out of thin air without warning, often following reports of extraterrestrial contact or other supernatural activity. They are said always to dress entirely in black, and their mission is to either scare or to frighten someone into silence or to discredit someone's truthfulness. Welcome to As Told by Bells, where mysteries unfold, the bizarre becomes reality, and strange stories come to life. I'm Bells, your guide into the world of the unexplained. Each week, we'll delve into unsolved mysteries that continue to baffle and tell so bizarre you won't believe they happened. To stay in the loop with every captivating story, make sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and ring that notification bell. Trust me, you don't want to miss a single episode of these extraordinary stories we're about to unravel. Now let the storytelling begin. The exact origins of Men in Black remain a mystery, with their prominence in alien lore emerging during the 1950s and 1960s. In popular media, Men in Blacks are depicted in various roles, most notably in the Men in Black movie series, where they serve as agents of a clandestine organization tasked with overseeing and regulating extraterrestrial activities on Earth. In these narratives, they are portrayed not as the ominous figures of UFO folklore, but as protectors with a crucial mission to safeguard Earth from extraterrestrial threats while concealing their existence. Despite their prominent place in folklore and pop culture, there is no concrete evidence that the men in black exist. They remain a compelling part of UFO mythology, embodying the human fascination with the unknown and the desire for secrecy in the face of inexplicable phenomena. There have been several notable instances where individuals claimed encounters with the men in black. These encounters are often associated with UFO sightings or other paranormal activities. Here are a few well-documented cases. Albert K. Bender, the founder of the International Flying Saucer Bureau, the IFSB, is one of the first and most well-known instances involving the men in black. During the 1950s, Bender, who was extensively involved in UFO research and had founded the world's first big civilian UFO group in 1952, described a disturbing experience. He stated that three mysterious entities dressed in black approached him, speaking telepathically and urging him to cease his UFO investigations. These meetings left Bender with severe headaches and a deep sense of anxiety, prompting him to dissolve his successful organization in 1953. Bender's narrative, detailed in They Knew Too Much About Flying Saucers by Gray Barker, an IFSB associate, became foundational in the lore of the men in black. It was only in 1962, after a period of silence, that Bender chose to share his experience in his book, Flying Saucers and the Three Men, suggesting these beings hailed from another planet. Bender's time in Bridgeport was marked by events that seemed almost mystical, with him discussing a cosmic guard surrounding him. This period coincided with numerous UFO sightings and other unexplained occurrences. During his World Contact Day event, Bender attempted to establish contact with extraterrestrial beings through collective thought projection, but this led to even more disturbing experiences in his own home. Despite the intrigue and fear surrounding his experiences, Bender's contributions to ufology remain significant. His encounters with the men in black not only intensified the mystery surrounding UFO research, but also influenced popular culture's perceptions of these enigmatic figures. While skeptics might question the veracity of Bender's accounts, his story continues to captivate those fascinated by the unexplained, marking a pivotal chapter in the history of UFO encounters. Dr. Herbert Hopkins, a physician consulting on a UFO case in Maine in 1976, encountered a strange twist in his research. 
While delving into a subject's memories using hypnotic regression, his life changed when a representative from the New Jersey UFO Research Organization urgently requested to meet at his home. This visitor, dressed all in black and exhibiting otherworldly characteristics, urged Hopkins to halt his research and destroy all related evidence. Performing unexplainable acts, the visitor left Hopkins with a deep sense of unease, reminiscent of the unsettling fate of Barney Hill, a well-known UFO experiencer. Despite the profound impact of this encounter on Hopkins, leading him to abandon his UFO investigations, skepticism remains, particularly from a blog post by Hopkins' nephew, suggesting the story might be a fabrication born of loneliness and a desire for attention. This account straddles the line between the mystical and the questionable, leaving the truth of Hopkins' experience open to interpretation. Danny Gordon, a dedicated radio journalist from Whitville, Virginia, found himself engrossed in a series of UFO sightings that captivated the local community. While working at WYVE Radio, where he had risen to prominence as the news and sports director, Gordon's life took an unexpected turn when he delved into the unexplained aerial phenomenon reported by the town's folk. His connection with the White County Sheriff's Office, particularly with Sheriff Wayne Pike, provided him with unique insights into local happenings. One day, a conversation with Pike about a UFO sighting by three police officers in Fort Chiswell piqued Gordon's curiosity and led him to broadcast the story, unaware of the frenzy it would unleash. In no time at all, WYVE radio was flooded with calls from local residents, each recounting their own mysterious encounters, catapulting Danny Gordon into the center of an escalating enigma. What began as a simple curiosity morphed into a deep personal investigation for truth. One memorable night, while traveling on U.S. Route 21 with a companion, they witnessed a baffling object in the sky. Despite being equipped with cameras, they were so captivated by the sight that they failed to capture it on film. As the mystery deepened, Gordon's personal life began to intertwine with these strange occurrences. He involved his family in nightly sky-watching ventures, leading to another remarkable sighting. This time, they managed to photograph the unidentified object. Eager to share their findings, Danny scheduled a press conference for the next day, October 23, 1987, which drew attention to both local and national media, highlighting the intense public interest in the UFO phenomena of Waitville, Virginia. On the eve of the press conference, an unsettling anonymous phone call warned Danny of the CIA and federal government's interest in the Waitville UFOs, plunging him into a whirlwind of uncertainty and concern, amid pressures from his wife to disengage and mysterious calls advising him to steer clear of defense matters, Danny found himself in a predicament. Following the press conference, Danny faced a chilling revelation his home had been burglarized. Though nothing appeared to be missing, he suspected that the intruders were searching for the UFO photographs. This incident left him wondering if the men in black, known for their involvement in such matters, were behind the intrusion. Throughout these events, Paul Dellinger, a veteran journalist, offered a professional viewpoint on the unfolding saga. Eventually, he and Gordon collaborated on a book that delved into Virginia's enigmatic UFO sightings. Their combined efforts shed light on the community's collective fascination and the persistent pursuit of answers amidst the unexplained. After supposedly experiencing a UFO sighting, Paul Miller and his companions were racing back home when they encountered three men in black suits who warned them not to speak of the incident. Miller, who was in the Air Force at the time, was later approached by two men in uniforms at his place of work. They suggested they knew about his UFO encounter, even though he had told no one about it. This incident left Miller convinced that the men in black were real and somehow involved with the government or military. Jack Robinson and Mary Robinson. In the 1960s, 
ufologist Jack Robinson and his wife Mary reported being harassed by a man in black after Jack began to delve deeper into UFO research. Mary noticed a strange man in black attire who was standing across the street from their apartment, seemingly surveilling them. Their friend, Timothy Green Beckley, even photographed this man, which has become one of the few pieces of alleged physical evidence of the men in black's existence. Maury Island Incident One of the earliest men in black encounters is associated with the Maury Island Incident in 1947. Harold Dahl claimed to have witnessed falling debris from UFOs over Maury Island and took photographs of the debris. After reporting the incident, he was visited by a man in a black suit. The man was said to have threatened Dahl and his family, telling him not to talk about what he saw. The case was later investigated by two Air Force intelligence officers and has been a source of speculation and controversy among UFO researchers. John Kill, the author of The Mothman Prophecies, reported several encounters with men in black during his investigation of the Mothman sightings in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Witnesses of the Mothman phenomena also reported visits from strange individuals who advised them not to speak about their sightings. Kill described these individuals as having odd features, like very pale skin and an absence of eyebrows. These encounters, often described in the context of UFO research and sightings, contribute to mysterious lore of the men in black. They are usually characterized by an air of intimidation, usual knowledge, and sometimes inexplicable phenomena, which continue to intrigue and puzzle researchers and enthusiasts in the field of ufology. The men in black encapsulates a fascinating intersection of folklore, pop culture, and the enigmatic allure of the unknown, particularly in the realm of UFO phenomena. Originating in the mid-20th century, these shadowy figures have evolved from ominous entities purportedly silencing UFO witnesses into iconic characters in media exemplified by the popular Men in Black film series. Despite numerous anecdotal accounts ranging from Albert K. Bender's unsettling encounters to the mysterious visitations reported by Dr. Herbert Hopkins and others, concrete evidence of the men in black's existence remain elusive. This blend of myth, personal testimonies, and cultural representation underscores a deep-seated human curiosity about the unknown and the unexplained, making the men in black a perennial subject of intrigue and speculation in the quest to understand our place in the cosmos. Thank you for joining me on this journey into the mysteries of the unexplained. Remember to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on every captivating story we uncover. Until next time, keep your eyes open and your mind curious. Stay tuned for more stories from As Told by Bells.